Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn with Smiley. In today's video, you are going to learn about all the basic concepts of a programming language. Wait, what is a programming language? Before getting into that, let me explain or with a qu very small example. Okay, but before that, I just want to ask you a question. In which language am I speaking? Obviously, it's English, right? If I speak some other language, let's say if I speak Chinese, will you understand? No, right? So then uh, you, you feel some difficulty to understand what I say. But if I speak in English, it would be easy. And most of the people can understand this language, right? If we are having some specific boundaries, like we can understand only this language, like either English or our native language, then why not a computer? Yes. Yeah. So that makes programming language to come into a limelight. So here the languages that are understood by a computer is called as a programming language. OK, let's make that clear. OK, so if you see here clearly, we have a person saying hello. And at the same time, a robot is saying hello uh, in different language. It's called binary language. OK, so here to understand binary language, I ask you to focus on the binary by by means two. OK, so it is comprising of only two digits. One is zero and another one is one. OK, so this is a binary language where a computer can completely understand. So whatever the information you give, that will be all converted into a binary language. Fine. So and we have programming languages again. What is this programming language? Let's say I want you to do some work like I want you to subscribe to my channel. So I will say please subscribe to my channel. So you will do you will do when I say it in a easy language, right? Then if I want computer to do some work for me. OK, so can I say, hey, computer, please do this. Will it understand? Not at all. Then programming language plays an important role. OK, by there are many programming languages like Python, C, C++, Java and all. Of course, Python is my favorite and maybe it will become your favorite too after some time. OK, so let me make this clear. I don't know binary language. Computer don't know English or Telugu or Hindi. Then what can I do? I have a weapon with me that is programming language. I can use programming language so that the uh, computer can get a ease to understand what exactly I am saying. OK, so this is about the concept of programming language. I hope you got a clear idea on this. Let's move on to the next concept. OK, the next concept here is computer. What is a computer? Don't think it's a stupid question because everyone knows what is a computer, but the definition has a lot of meaning in it. I know everyone are learning the definition of computer from the sixth standard, but here is the time to concentrate exactly what the definition is. Obviously, computer is an electronic device. Let me uh, say the definition in a clear way. A computer is an electronic device which takes the input, process the information and gives you the output. Am I wrong? No, right? So let me explain this in a clear terms. I know phone can also be a form of computer, right? So uh, I know everyone has phone here and also everyone has a passcode for their phone. I don't want to ask your passcode, but I want to take that example. Let me say I want to unlock my phone. I want to enter four digit number so that I can unlock my phone. Right. So that means I'm giving some input to my phone in the form of passcode. Once I enter my passcode, the four digit, it will process the information and it will check whether I'm entering the correct passcode or not. In case if I enter the correct passcode, it will unlock the phone. That means it was giving me an output by unlocking my phone. Suppose if the passcode that I have entered is wrong and that computer or the phone knows it, 
then it will say sorry please try again or it is a invalid password please try again right so that is the output that i get from the phone so this is a quick example of input processing the information and giving the output got it or else let's take a very quick example like a camera uh, like camera app in your phone so when you open the camera app it will click picture only when you click on the button that is needed for clicking the picture right when you click on that uh, white round button in the camera app it will capture the info that means you are giving a input by clicking on that button so that it was getting a notification that it needs to click that picture and the processing information is capturing that and saving it so it will you are not telling that take this photo and save it in this folder it itself know that it needs to save in the image folder like the photos app right so here there is a lot of work going behind so input output is one step but processing the information is the main step behind because until that step having been done well you will not get exact output right so let's learn each and every term in a very clear way but before that i want to explain one more concept called events what are events so within this image you can get an idea about events right so events is something that are done by the user so that we are getting some information like it's like let's take a quick example of our real life okay when we say there is an event like event means some festival or some uh, guest lecture or some college party so this all comes under event means something is happening there right so when user does something we are telling that it's a event when user clicks on a mouse or when user types something on the keyboard or when user touches the screen it means some particular a uh, work is happening there or something is happening there so that the computer should immediately respond to it so that is called as an event so that is a action we can say used by the user in order to get some output from it okay next we are here with another term called algorithm have you ever heard about this term called algorithm no okay so now let me ask you a quick question how do you prepare your coffee it's a bit tough question i guess but it's okay we'll try to manage it how to prepare a coffee and this comes under the concept of algorithm how to prepare a coffee so we need some ingredients we have to get all the ingredients that are needed and we need uh, to place it on the stove switch on the stove and then like you have to let the stove and you have to do the process so i'm just writing it as process and i just want to don't give the hint of making a coffee okay and then once you're done like adding all the ingredients like sugar coffee and milk and some water and then you boil it and then you'll filter it and there you get your coffee right so these are the steps that i need to follow to get my coffee done right and here is one more step having coffee with biscuits right this is a step by step procedure that i'm doing in order to get my coffee right so that is an algorithm in programming so the step by step process that i follow is a, is called as an algorithm in programming let me take a, another quick example like 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 okay so in order to solve this can you add all the four at a once no right first you will say 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 5 10 and 10 plus 6 16 so you are going in step by step process in order to get that particular solution right 5 then 5 5 plus 5 10 10 plus 6 16 so then you are getting a clear answer right so here the step by step process that a computer follows or that we design in order to get the task done 
is called as an algorithm any doubts till now i hope there are no doubts and then next we are done with computer input and output we have done with events and we done with algorithm also right now here comes one more part is loops but before that i want to go ahead and explain about variables which is the most interesting topic that i have ever seen you know so what are variables variables are like uh let me ask you a question here have you ever used a pencil box or a lunch box or a bag yes right so let me take a quick example of pencil box why you use pencil box because you want to store all your stationary items there like your pencils eraser sharpener pen and all the things that are related to it right so here let's say we are having a pencil box and we are keeping all the pens in the box okay so it's like a storage we can say right it is a storage for us to store all our stationary items so when it act, act when it is acting like a storage let's say i bought a new pencil where will i store again i will store it in the pencil box that means i'm updating the count in my pencil box right so which is helping me to store it and if i want to make a notes again i will grab that uh, pencil from the box and i will have my notes and again i'll keep it back it's like a storage container when i want i will use it if i have new items i will add up that means updating that pencil box with my new list or if some pencils are uh, like some pencils are uh, completed or some pen pen ink is completed i don't uh, have any use with that then i'll throw them off from the pencil box that means like i'm storing whatever i want if i get new things i'm adding to it if i get uh, the things that are done i'm just keeping over back of it right so that means a pencil box is a storage which helps you store and helps you whenever you want you will take it whenever you don't want you will store it there right so let's relate this example with the programming language i don't want to take the code here but i want to take a quick example of a game okay have you ever played candy crush obviously yes or any game of your wish let's take that so when you take a candy crush when you do the matching things your score is increasing right so when you uh, okay let me change my example to fruit ninja okay so when you play fruit ninja uh, that is the easiest example i have so i'm going with that example so when you hit all the when you match or when you cut all the fruits you are getting adding up the score but initially what is your score initially your score is zero once you start playing this your score is getting updated every time that means there is a variable called score which is adding all your current uh, scores like you know if you get if you are cutting three which three fruits you are getting three score if you are getting more you are getting more and there is also some special scenario where there will be a bomb comes right if you are just unexpectedly do it it will explode where all your score will be minus with some 10 points or 20 points right so every time the score is getting updated that means here there is a variable which is playing an important role that is an important of a variable i hope you got it let's move on to the next topic okay so the next topic comes here is loop what is a loop mm it's not very complex let me take a quick example let's take we are drinking a coffee but we are drinking it in a um, coffee shop so they will not add directly the sugar that we want they will not directly uh, ask they'll give you some packet of sugar right so when they give you some packet of sugar like packet 1 packet 2 and packet 3 for me i need a very sweet coffee so i might add all the three or for some they need only a very light sweetness so they can add only one packet of sugar 
right so here that means i am keeping on like as i told i need very sweet coffee i keep on adding the sugar packets until i find it is sweet right so until i find this coffee sweet i keep on adding my sugar packets onto the uh, like into the coffee right so that means a particular task is doing by me again and again until i feel satisfied or let's take a very silly example that is drinking a coffee uh so you will drink coffee until it gets over right that means you are repeating the same task again and again until it is getting over so that is a loop you are repeating the same task again and again got it so now in this loop there are different conditions or there are different types of loops one is while loop and another one is until and another one is for loop what is while loop while loop is something like uh let me take here it's a garden okay i have some fruits over here okay i'm very bad at drawing ignore so i have some fruits here so i want to write a condition like i want to use a loop like while there is a fruit pick it up that means when the condition is true i will pick up this fruits right so means while loop works on a particular condition when it is true while there is a fruit pick up the fruit and what is until until is something like keep on picking up the fruits until there is no fruit remained in the garden got my example of until next what is for loop a uh, for loop will have some range from low to high range okay let's say for 1 to 5 uh, for this i want to take another quick example let's say i want to print 1 to 5 numbers okay so if i want to print 1 to 5 numbers what i should do i have to increment by 1 every time right so here i will have for loop here and i will start from 1 okay i'll start taking from 1 and every time i will say you need to print the numbers from 1 to 5 and every time you need to increment with 1 so for this condition i use for loop where it keeps on repeating until it reaches 5 and meanwhile it was reaching 5 it will it will keep on adding one point to it so that it will reach till 5 and then my loop stops got it so that is a example of for loop you will you will understand it more clearly when you connect this topic with any of the programming language code so i'm not taking this programming language here because you might feel bit difficult here so that's the reason i will teach you with an example in the coming python course okay get ready for that next we will have uh, the concept of functions what is a function in your real life we already know that it is some particular uh, thing where we enjoy a lot but here let me tell you what is a function okay so here we will have functions because when a particular code is repeating and repeating and repeating and we don't want that so that we use function then you can say you can use loop yes i can use loop but i don't want to repeat that many sentences most of the times bit clumsy let me explain suppose i want to draw a square so i am writing the code for drawing a square okay so when i write the code for drawing the square what i will write like move forward like in a, in our real easy terms move forward turn right 90 degrees move forward turn right 90 degrees so, so like that i need to repeat it four times right so i need to repeat move forward and turn right how many times i need to repeat i need to repeat it four times which is time consuming and it is also increasing most of my code if i need to print the square 10 times on my screen so if i need to print 10 times on my screen the square that means 
four like this should be written four times which is eight lines of the code and i need to print it 10 times which might become 80 lines of the code then i will feel so hectic and i just want to drop from learning code no no don't do that so here we have the magic of functions here so here we will uh, completely embed the code that is keep on repeating like i can just say move forward turn right move forward turn right four times like this is repeated four times that i will keep everything in a particular block of code in this particular block of code i keep my code of move forward turn right four times and i'll name it as draw square okay so whenever i want to draw a square if I, as i told you i need a square to be drawn 10 times on my screen i will directly use a loop and i'll just put draw square name inside it so that it keeps on going with it and my task will be as easy as possible so here tells this tells about the importance of a function it helps us to reduce the code so that we, it can make our work easier got it so that is about functions next coming to the next concept the final concept of today's video is if else okay so if else uh, like uh, let me tell you with a example here if it rains carry an umbrella else do not carry an umbrella tell me who likes to carry an umbrella on a normal days no one right so everyone feels like a burden to carry an umbrella but in rainy season for sure it will be one of the uh, stuff in our bag right so if if that means it was specifying a condition if it rains carry an umbrella else do not like if suppose there is a very big code uh, like if there is a very big data of numbers and we need to find only prime numbers so we will write a condition that if for that particular condition of prime numbers then print all these numbers else do not print these numbers so here you need to understand for printing the prime numbers from 1 to 10 you need to include a loop because it needs to start from 1 to 10 and also you need to check the condition every time to print the prime numbers for that we are using if else so a loop is included and if else is also included so that is a quick explanation about if else so if the condition satisfies the inside code will get executed no it will go to else block and that condition will get executed so this is a basic these are the basic concepts that we come across in each and every uh, particular programming language and these are the some topics which might also ask in uh, interviews to explain uh, what exactly this mean so these are the very important concepts i feel that everyone must learn it's not about learning it's about as anyone can say a variable but you need to get to know what exactly a variable is what exactly the role the variable is playing so i hope if you like this video please hit the like button and share it with your friends to whom you want to share and make them also know about these terms and programming languages and also please subscribe to my channel for more videos bye bye take care